AutoSys Workload Automation Installation in Single Server Mode on Windows with a Microsoft SQL Server Database. In this module, we will learn how to install AutoSys Workload Automation in Single Server Mode on Windows using a Microsoft SQL Server Database and validate the installation. The following are prerequisites when installing AutoSys Workload Automation Server. Log in as a user with Windows Administrators Group Privileges. Check whether the IP address returned by the hostname command matches the IP address returned by the NSLOOKUP command. Install and configure the Microsoft SQL Server Client Utilities on the computer where you plan to install the AutoSys Workload Automation Server and confirm you can connect to the database. The database must be created before the installation. A user with database administrator permissions is required to create AutoSys database objects during installation. An instance of CAEM must be installed and accessible. The IAM admin administrator user password is required during installation. If there is no sufficient space available in the temp directory, you can set the IA tempter environment variable to configure the temp location to a path in which there is sufficient space. For more detailed information, please refer to the AutoSys workload automation documentation. In this video, we will install AutoSys on Windows using a Microsoft SQL Server database. Before we begin the installation process, ensuring connectivity from the AutoSys server to the database server and the CAEM server is essential. We must also validate that we can access the database from the AutoSys server. We need to have installed and configured the Microsoft SQL Server Client Utilities for this. Additionally, we will require a database administrator user to create the database objects and the CAEM administrator user to register AutoSys. Also, we must have downloaded the software and validated it with the checksum. We will now perform the necessary validations before proceeding with the installation. Let's start validating we have connectivity to the Microsoft SQL Server database and the CAEM server. We do a ping to the CAEM server. And we get a response, we have connectivity to the CAEM server. Now, we execute a TNC command to the CAEM server with the 5250 port to check if the port is open. We get a response. We have connectivity to the CAEM through the port. We ping the database server and get a response. We have connectivity to the database server. We execute a TNC command to the database server with the 1433 port. And we get a response. We have connectivity to the database through this port. Now, let's validate we can log into the database. We execute the Microsoft SQL Server command, SQL CMD. We have logged in successfully. Now we log into CAEM to validate the CAEM administrator user. We will need this user later to register the AutoSys we are installing. Just logging CAEM with the IAM admin administrator user is enough. Now, we are going to validate if the software has been downloaded successfully. We execute the certutil command with the AutoSys ISO file to generate the file checksum value and wait until it is completed. Meanwhile, we open the checksum PDF file provided by Broadcom and find the checksum value we will use to validate. In this case, the SHA-1 algorithm checksum for AutoSys workload automation for Windows DVD and paste it 
to compare both values. Both values are identical. The ISO file was downloaded successfully. We have completed the pre-installation validations. Let's continue with the installation. We are going to start the AutoSys installation now. From the DVD, we execute the install program as administrator and wait until the program launches. The installation wizard appears. Click Next. We accept the terms of the license agreement. Click Next. Select the option Install the product. Click Next. Select the custom installation. The Express option presents us with fewer installation options. With the custom option, we can further configure the installation according to our requirements. Click Next. We are going to use the Java bundled with the installation. Select Next. Here we have the AutoSys components to install. We leave those selected by default, which are the scheduler, the application server, the REST web service API, the client, and the agent, the software development kit, and the secure socket adapter. Select Next. These are the installation paths for AutoSys and the shared components. Select Next. This is the name of the AutoSys instance to be created. In this case, we will create the ACE instance. This option is to encrypt the data transmitted between the managers and the agents. In this demo, we will use the default key for instance level data encryption. However, this is not recommended in a production environment. For production environments, the best practice is to select the option to encrypt data using a user-defined key. We leave the option to use the instance-level data encryption values also for the agent. Click Next. For this installation, we will not activate FIPS 142 encryption. Here we select the database type. We are going to use Microsoft SQL Server. We will not install a dual event server at this time. We keep the option Create the Database Schema selected as default. Here we enter the database server name. The database name. We leave port 1433 as default. Click Next. Here we choose to use Microsoft SQL Server authentication and enter the database administrator user credentials. This administrator user must have permission to create the necessary database tables, users, and other objects included in the AutoSys database schema. Select Next. Now, we enter the database username for AutoSys. We leave the default AutoSys name and enter the password this user will have. The user will be created during AutoSys installation. Click Next. We enter the CAEM server name and the password for the administrator user, I am admin. Click Next. Here we leave the default scheduler auxiliary port. We do not select the high availability option. We leave the default option to install the primary scheduler. Select Next. We leave the application server name by default. It is the same server where we are installing. We also leave port and auxiliary port default values. Select Next. 
We leave the default port for REST Web Services. Select Next. This is the agent configuration. We leave the name of the agent by default. It can be changed when necessary. And the port the agent uses to communicate. It can be multiplexed. We can also activate SNMP on the agent. Select Next. This list will include the application server port numbers that will interact with this agent. We have only one application server at this moment. Here we define when the components will start. We select Start Post Installation if we want either of these components to start once the installation is complete. Or by default, we leave the option to start the components after the system startup. Click Next. This section is to activate the product. Enter the company domain, usually the last part of your company's email address. For example, Broadcom.com domain. The enterprise site ID of your company at Broadcom. We enter zero just as an example. And an optional internal company identifier. Click Next. Here we can select if we want to send Broadcom telemetry data about product license usage. We leave the default yes to send telemetry data. Also, you can optionally define a proxy server to send usage data. The AutoSys scheduler sends telemetry data to Broadcom through port 443. You can secure this port by using a proxy server to allow only authenticated access. Select Next. Now we get the installation summary. Here is where the AutoSys installation logs will be created. And here is where the agent logs will be created. We will install the Java bundle with the product. These are the components to install. These are the installation paths where each component will be installed. The AutoSys instance name. The instance level data encryption. If we use FIPS 142. The database properties. The AutoSys database user. Security with CAEM. The scheduler properties, we can see that it will start automatically at system startup. The application server properties. The REST web services properties. The agent properties. All these properties are later configurable. We click on install to begin the installation. The AutoSys installation was completed successfully. The screen shows where the post installation logs are. We save the URL to configure the web UI component later. We click on Done to conclude the installation process. Let's go to the installation logs on the server. Here we have the AutoSys installation logs. Now let's test the installation. We open the AutoSys administrator. Also, we open two AutoSys command prompts. We go to the AutoSys administrator, go to the services, and start the services. We start the application server. Also the scheduler. And the web server.
We can also start with right click on the service. We start the agent. We go to the auto sys command prompt and execute the chk underscore auto underscore up command with the option R followed by 111 to know the status of the application server, the event server, and the scheduler. We can see the database is connected. The application server and the primary scheduler are running. Now let's go to the application server and scheduler logs. We enter the command auto sys log with the option to open the scheduler log. The agent in the local machine is running. Let's go to the application server log. We enter the same command auto sys log with the S option to display the application server log. The application server is running and there are no errors in the log. Let's go back to the scheduler log and keep it running. We go to the other command prompt to create a test job. We use the jill command. We enter the job name in the machine where the job will run, this machine. The job was included successfully. We list the jobs with the autorep command to verify the job was included. Here we have the job. Let's run the job using the send event command. In the scheduler log, we can see the job is starting. But it failed because the user running the job is incorrect. In Windows, we need to define an auto sys, the user who will run the job. We execute the auto sys security utility. Select option 5 to manage users. Select option 1 to manage users with password. Select the option 1 to create a user. Enter the username, in this case, administrator. The user host domain. And the user's password. The user was created successfully. We exit the security utility. The job is restarted and now executes successfully. Let's check the job status now. We enter the autorep command to list the job. And we can see the job status is success. We can also see the last start and end job execution dates. With this, we have completed the installation of Autosys on a Windows server with a Microsoft SQL Server database. In this module, we have learned Prerequisites and considerations for Autosys Workload Automation Installation How to install Autosys Workload Automation in single server mode on Windows with a Microsoft SQL Server database How to locate the Autosys Workload Automation Installation Locks And how to validate the installation